Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, what are your feelings on old cartridges? Have you ever revived any ink? We'll get into that, so let's dive into the pens. I need to apologize, uh, due to some issues. I ended up, I'm recording this on Friday, uh, between the end of school and the start of a basketball game that I'm supposed to be there to photograph. So I may talk quickly and may not have a whole lot to say. <laughs> Alrighty. Or I may babble and miss the beginning of the game. Who knows? So I'm experimenting with that same light again. So it's my hand in front of that light. This is my hand away from it. We'll see if it helps. Uh, so from left to right, I have a Montblanc 32, which has been my daily writer. For a few weeks. Uh, Waterman Cor Not a Waterman Koran. <laughs> Gotta redo my photograph for Instagram now. Well, how about Waterman's Ideal 52? Redo that photo. Uh, Rexall Monogram. Uh, Senator Matt Gray and Silver. Senator Crack Blind Cap. Matador 992. Muñeca 55. Parker Vacumatic, and Geha Futura, which is where this topic comes from. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in my BOMO art journal. First up, I have my Montblanc 32, which is a nice slim black pen. It's the only true Montblanc that I own. Pen from the 1960s, the Nintarja Nib. It's been my uh, daily writer, I think, for the last three weeks. It's a pleasant pen. You know, not one of those jump up and down like you might with this pen, but pleasant. Has an extra fine nib. It's just perfect for taking notes. And I filled it with a lovely batch of Lamy Black. Which is a bottle I'm trying to empty out. Hit the easy targets first. So just a nice daily use black colored ink. My next pen, which did the writing up here, which we're going to analyze a little more closely, that's why I did the title with it, is an elderly Waterman's 50, Ideal 52 with no clip because the clip broke off long before I owned it. Don't blame me has a fairly nice Waterman's sort of a nib. A little bit of fading going on in the ebonite. You can see the line where the cap prevented this part from being faded. The ink in it has to be something special. It's diamine. Smoke on the water. I promised the person who sent me these samples um, that I would use these samples in only pens that really will show them off well. And this is a pen that will show this ink off well. These are high sheening inks. They are a special line from diamine that apparently is sold only in Germany and when I say high sheening let me give you a close-up I may I'll try to remember to give you a close-up here too but you see the date I mean even on my tiny little preview screen I can see the sheen in that stuff so these are fun inks if you're into sheen. I mean, if you don't like sheen, well, what's wrong with you? Just kidding. We all have our different things we like. Some people really like the look of railroading. All right, then I have a monogram pen. 
made for the Rexall Drug Company back in the 1920s. Uh, slightly ground to an oblique, I believe. At least it looks like it to my naked eye. Whoops. <laughs> Picked up some smoke on the water there. This is actually Platinum Classic. Citrus Black. Just recently I was watching a video where they were writing with it. Doing, it looked like calligraphy. Somebody with better handwriting than me anyway. Black, not blank. And, uh, you know, their whole point was just to watch the color change in the ink as they continued to write. So, what was it, a poem or paragraph, something, I don't really recall. So, of course, I had to ink up a pen with that. Then... I have a Senator, matte gray and black and silver. I almost want to call it the Silver Fox because it's pretty sweet looking. One of those V-nibs, kind of like the Caveco pens. Just a very nice finish. I like this pen a lot. This is another one that would be a good daily writer. You know, I... Okay, I'll be good, but I may be renaming this pen. Because now that I've said Silver Fox, <laughs> it is in my brain. Silver Fox. I'll write that there and I'll think about it if I want to rename this pen. I, I see I don't have model numbers for my Senator pens for the most part, so I make up names for them. And I kind of like the Silver Fox a lot better than I like... Uh, Matte gray and silver. Although I'm not too thrilled with Senators as a breed in general right at the moment. Hiroshizuku. Uh, Asagao. Which uh, a commenter last week was, con oops, ASA, was concerned seeing me put it in a vintage pen. If you're going to put this in a vintage pen, this is a good one to put it into. Uh, this is... Uh, Actually, a very robust piston filler uh, made to very high standards. You know, would I put it in, say, the Waterman's Ideal 52? No. But this is this pen could handle anything. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't put Bay State Blue in it, but, you know, anything normal. Sorry. That was not a PC remark. Okay. And speaking of that, uh, you know, as one commenter pointed out, I'm, I'm uh, making fun of somebody's uh, personal characteristics with this one. Senator Crack Blind Cap! And I do have the glue here to fix the Crack Blind Cap, so we may have to rename him after this is over. Or her, because it could be a lady pen. Who knows? I haven't... Yeah, let's just drop it there. <laughs> I was going to make a joke that... I realized as I was about to say it would be kind of inappropriate. Senator, cracked blind gap. Ooh, I think this was almost dried out there. And now that I think about it, I'm not picturing anything in my brain that I've actually, whoops, written with this pen recently. So I'll bet this has been sitting in my desk, or my pen case, unused all week. Um, you'll see why toward the end of the video here. This is a Krishna Specialty After Dark ink. But it is showing something I've noticed with this ink. If it sits, it starts out very light and then it turns darker. Which is the opposite of what I see with most inks.
I am rushing, aren't I? That, that looks messy even by my standards. Uh, this week's review was the Matador 992. This is a pen with a 1930s with a rather stunning amount of detail to it. I mean, even these thin little cap bands have detail on them. A lot of detail on the clip. The decoration on the barrel and on, well, I guess the barrel on the head. Most of it's worn off the barrel. Uh, but on the cap. And even some nibbling. And in the comments section on this video, we've had some discussion over whether that's human or cat nibbling. So this is a matador. And it was suggested to me, why didn't you use diamine matador ink? And the answer is, I don't own any. This is a nice ink too. Uh, Califolio. I must have been on a blue kick. Blue Azure. Califolio inks are supposed to be vintage friendly. And some may complain that the colors aren't as exciting as other brands, but they do have some nice colors. And with your more elderly pens, a little peace of mind is not harmful. We'll just go back up briefly to the this. I just wanted to show off what the sheen has become here. On that smoke on the water. I think that's pretty sweet. My Muñeca 55 from the Eva Perón era of Argentina. Actually a very attractive pen. Somewhat, you know, it's not fancy, it's not a very big pen, but it is a very nice pen. And this ink has actually really grown on me. When I first put it in the pen, I was just like, that isn't really a goldfish color. But as I have used this ink, I have come to enjoy this color. And, you know, it could be the company it's keeping at the moment. A review I just filmed this week, the Parker Vacuumatic. So expect that one soon. Oh golly. Didn't see that one coming. I was just writing with this pen last night. Okay, and it's writing again. And it quit again. And I know it's not empty because I just filmed that review this week. So isn't that special? Special. Okay, there we go. Parker. Of course, it didn't do that for the review. Uh, the ink in it is an interesting ink that you won't see from just any reviewer. It's a Parker ink. Parker Quink Green. Which as far as I can see they've discontinued, but it's a very... It's actually a very nice green with some shading. I, I like this color a lot and I really need to put it in an, into a broad nib. Or even a stub or... Maybe a flex nib. Something where I can really see what this ink can do.
because it's pretty good stuff. Now, my last pen was an experiment. So, uh, I, I did the first impression a few weeks ago. This is a Geha Futura 714. And I had a metal doohickey that I couldn't figure out what it was for, but it, I learned later. Oh, boy. I learned later that it's to hold two cart oops two two cartridges like this to fill the barrel. See? You put the cartridge in backwards. No, I didn't. This end is for Geha pens. This end is for not Geha pens. So what did I do? Bought myself two packages of Geha cartridges is what I did. Now I can refill them with a syringe. Oops. <laughs> so I'm pretty pleased with how that worked out. I may try reconstituting the ink in one of the cartridges, one or more of the cartridges, but for now, I just cleaned this one out. This is a Geha Futura. Uh-oh. That's not so impressive. Come on. Two, we can't have this with two pens in a row. I will be sad. Sad emoji. I feel like something like that happened when I filmed its first impression, too. No, I was writing with it last night. Uh, the ink in it is Lamy Black, and the FS stands for Fine Steno. So a little more flex to it than the Mont Blanc 32 that I opened with. Just kind of a fun pen. Now, in the interest of uh, a discussion I had last week, I'm just briefly going to mention, uh, I, I get the question every so often, uh, how do I run through so many pens so quickly? And the answer is, I don't. I have a few pens sitting here that are currently in use, except uh, they took a week off. I have a Waterman Karen, a Geha Boy, um, pen BBS of some flavor, Artisan Classic, and a Parker Duo Fold. You'll probably see one or more of them back in service next week. I'll rotate around. I actually have one or two pens here that are almost empty, so, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Mont Blanc will be empty next week, because that Fu Geha Futura is supposed to take its place. I also have, I am leaning over to get them. Two upcoming first impressions. Don't know when, but coming. This is a Monte Rosa of some kind. This is a, what is it? A reform. Um, and I would swear there was a Geha around that was also supposed to be, um, that I also found a re first impression of, but I'm not seeing it right here. So I'm wondering if I emptied it out. Or what the heck I did with it, I don't know. Look at my uh, review book here. Oh, started a new review book this week. That, that was exciting. It would be a first impression, not a review. Holy buckets, I'm tired or something. I don't know what's wrong with me. Hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know exactly what I did with it. So I'll have to look for it. I, uh, I'm sure it's around somewhere. That color ink would have been a fun one to be writing with. Okay, on uh, two side notes. I experimented with this uh, this week, I think, during one of my reviews. I don't know if it's one I published yet or not. Um, 
little light that I purchased originally it was going to be a backlight but then I thought it would be more useful here and yeah whatever review that was if it's been published yet uh, the trouble I was having was dead battery so recharge the battery it worked throughout this video the way it had worked when I originally got it so I will uh, be curious about the footage to see if it actually helped but uh, yeah I always try to improve things I don't always succeed but I try <laughs> Um, the other excitement I have, uh, I, I experimented a little with a program called Notion. I like it. Uh, it's a alternative to Evernote. I'll tell you for now, I'm decided I'm going to curtail my experiments and stick with Evernote. I found I could do the important things with Evernote, just maybe not in as elegant a way, but I'm invested in Evernote and, uh, really not at a point in my life where I want to be learning a new piece of software. So it's a good experiment, something to put on the back burner to think about for the future. Um, and, and that brings me to, you know, a productivity point. I know I haven't really done anything other than film little footage, but my productivity series, there's something to be said for love the one you're with. Um, I know Evernote. I know its strengths and weaknesses. I don't really know Notion. And uh, right now isn't a good time to go to switch, and I don't really have a compelling reason to. Um, master one piece of software well. Even it may not be the best. Well, every so often you have to reevaluate, but uh, yeah. So, a little bit of free productivity video advice there, I guess. So, if uh, videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountains. <laughs> See, I'm thrown up at a whole basketball game where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And what are your thoughts on reconstituting some gay high ink down the road, one of these cartridges? Let us know down in the comments, rinks or link, risks, <laughs> pitfalls or whatever. Um, yeah, let me know. And uh, what's your philosophy on software? Love the one you're with or... Always jump to the new latest thing. Let us know. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.